Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to learn about IELTS speaking parts one and three. Our topic is going to be environmental protection. In this lesson, we're going to look at some questions and some sample answers. I'm also going to explain the vocabulary that I have used in the sample answers and give you a few tips to help you score a high band in your IELTS speaking, part one, part two, and part three. In this lesson, we're going to look at 12 questions. Let's begin with question one. Do you do anything to protect the environment? Do you do anything to protect the environment? In this question, the examiner wants you to tell him or her all the things that you do to protect the environment. Now, you can answer this question by saying, sample answer one. Yes, I try my best to protect the environment by recycling, not wasting water or throwing garbage on the streets and switching off the lights when I'm not in a room. Yes, I try my best to protect the environment by recycling, not wasting water or throwing garbage on the streets and switching off the lights when I'm not in a room. So in that sample answer, I told the examiner all the things that I do to protect the environment. Recycling, not wasting water, throwing garbage on the streets, switching off the lights when I'm not in a room. Now let's move on to question two, or rather sample answer two. Do you do anything to protect the environment? Quite frankly, I hardly do anything to safeguard the environment because I feel like it doesn't really make any difference on a global scale. This is due to the fact that only a small fraction of the world population is involved in environmental protection. Quite frankly, I hardly do anything to safeguard the environment because I feel like it doesn't really make any difference on a global scale. This is due to the fact that only a small fraction of the world population is involved in environmental protection. Now, in the second uh, sample answer, I told the examiner quite frankly. Now, quite frankly means honestly. Honestly, I hardly do anything to safeguard the environment. To safeguard is to protect. So I'm being very, very honest. I hardly do anything to safeguard or to protect the environment. And the reason is because I feel like it doesn't really make any difference on a global scale. Global scale is on a world platform. I feel like what I would do to uh, protect the environment does not really make any difference. It doesn't count on a global scale. And this is due to the fact that only a small fraction of the world population is involved in environmental protection. Now, remember with the questions that you get from the examiner, you don't always have to say yes. This is an English speaking test. It's not about being politically correct. You don't have to say yes if you don't mean it. The examiner is not really interested in um, lies, you know. Uh, just be honest, okay? If you don't do anything, do tell him or her that you don't uh, because it makes it easier for you to actually express the idea. Now, Let's move on to question two. Do you think you have done enough to protect the environment? 
In this question, the examiner wants to know whether you yourself, you think you have done enough to protect the environment. Now you can answer this question by saying, sample answer one. I suppose so because I'm always recycling, using public transport whenever I can and planting trees. I suppose so because I'm always recycling, using public transport whenever I can and planting trees. So in this sample answer, I have told the examiner that I think I have done enough. I suppose so means I think so. I suppose so means I think so. I think I have done enough to protect the environment because I'm always recycling. I'm always using public transport whenever I can. I'm always planting trees. Now let's move on to sample answer two. Do you think you've done enough to protect the environment? Not really. I still need to do more to safeguard the environment by turning off the tap every time I'm soaping myself whilst uh, showering or washing hands. As soon as I can, I, all, I do also plan on buying an electric car to reduce air pollution through exhaust pipe emission. Not really, I still need to do more to safeguard the environment by turning off the tap every time I'm soaping myself whilst showering or washing hands. As soon as I can, I do also plan on buying an electric car to reduce air pollution through exhaust pipe emission. Now, in this second uh, sample answer, I have told the examiner I don't really think I have done enough. Okay, I still need to do more to safeguard. To safeguard, it means to protect the environment by turning off the tap every time I'm soaping myself while showering or washing your hands. And as soon as I can, I do also plan on buying an electric car to reduce air pollution through exhaust pipe emission. So you turn off the tap. You soap yourself. When you go to the bathroom to shower, you wet your body with water. And then after that, you put soap in your hand and then you start lathering the soap and then you wash, uh, uh, you put the soap on your body. Okay. So that is sopping yourself while you're showering or washing hands. Now, some people let the tap actually run um, when they're sopping themselves, which is not environmentally uh, friendly. Now, let's move on to question three. Will you do anything in the future to protect the environment? In this question, the examiner wants to know your plans, you know, your future plans. Um, do you plan on doing anything in the future to protect uh, the environment? Now, you can answer this question by saying, sample answer one. Absolutely. In the future, I plan on using public transport more often instead of driving to work, quitting smoking, using reusable bags and planting more trees, especially in my local neighborhood, in order to safeguard the environment. Absolutely. In the future, I plan on using public transport more often instead of driving to work, quitting smoking, using reusable bags and planting more trees, especially in my local neighborhood, in order to safeguard the environment. So in that first sample answer, I told the examiner all the plans that I have uh, for the future to protect the environment. I plan on using public transport more often. I plan on quitting smoking. I plan on using reusable bags. I plan on planting more trees. Now, reusable bags are bags that you use and instead of throwing it away, you can use it the second time and the third time and the fourth time. Now, let's look at sample answer two. Will you 
do anything in the future to protect the environment? I plan on playing my part in protecting the environment by recycling plastic and electric gadgets such as mobile phones, as well as not littering on the street. In addition to that, I intend to avoid cutting down of trees at all costs. I plan on playing my part in protecting the environment by recycling plastic and electric gadgets such as mobile phones as well as not littering on the street. In addition to that, I intend to avoid cutting down of trees at all costs. So, in this sample answer, I told the examiner all my future plans that I have to protect the environment. I plan on recycling plastic, electric gadgets, not littering on the street. Now, not littering on the street means not throwing garbage on the street. I also intend to avoid cutting down of trees at all costs. I intend to means I plan on, okay? I plan to avoid, I intend to. Now, let's move on to question four. Did you learn about environmental protection at school? Did you learn about environmental protection at school? So the examiner wants to know, when you were at school, did you learn anything about how to protect the environment? Now, you can answer that question by saying sample answer one. Yes, I learned a great deal about environmental protection in a lot of my geography, science and biology lessons whilst I was in high school. It was part of the school curriculum which made it compulsory for all to learn. Yes, I learned a great deal about environmental protection in a lot of my geography, science and biology lessons whilst I was in high school. It was part of the school curriculum which made it compulsory for everyone to learn. So in that sample answer, I told the examiner that actually I learned a great deal. Now a great deal means I learned a lot about environmental protection in a lot of my geography, science and biology lessons whilst I was in high school. Whilst means while. It was part of the school curriculum which made it compulsory. Compulsory means a must for everybody to learn. Now, let's move on to sample answer two. Did you learn about environmental protection at school? Not at all. Back then, I was, when I was a student in the uh, 40s, global warming and climate change were not a problem at all. So lessons on environmental protection were unheard of. Not at all. Back then, when I was a student in the 40s, global warming and climate change were not a problem at all. So lessons on environmental protection were unheard of. Now, in this second uh, sample answer, I told the examiner that I did not learn anything about environmental protection at school. You know, because back then, in the 1940s was when I was a student. You know, global warming and climate change were not a problem at all. So lessons on environmental protection were unheard of. Unheard of means that nobody talked about them at all. Now, let's move on to question five. Would you like to work in a company related to environmental protection? Would you like to work in a company related to environmental protection? Now, in this question, the examiner wants to know whether you would like, would you like to work in a company which deals with environmental protection? Now, you can answer this question by saying, sample answer one. 
Yes, I would most certainly really like to work for a company that is actively involved in safeguarding the environment because it would give me a chance to help in stopping the side effects of climate change before it is too late. Yes, I would most certainly really like to work for a company that is actively involved in safeguarding the environment because it would give me a chance to help in stopping the side effects of climate change before it is too late. Now, in that first sample answer, I told the examiner that I would most certainly, most certainly means most definitely. Okay? like to work for a company that is actively involved in safeguarding the environment. And then I gave the examiner the reason why I would like that, because it would give me a chance to help in stopping the side effects of climate change before it is too late. Now, the side effects are the negative side effects of climate change. Now, let's move on to sample answer two. Would you like to work in a company related to environmental protection? Now, working for a company at the front line of environmental protection is something that I would really like to do in order to save Mother Nature from air pollution, deforestation and dumping of industrial wastes in rivers and lakes. Working for a company at the front line of environmental protection is something that I would really like to do in order to save Mother Nature from air pollution, deforestation, and dumping of industrial wastes in rivers and lakes. Now, in that second sample answer, I told the examiner that I would really like to uh, work for a company that is at the front line, at the front line, meaning that it's a company that is very, very, very deeply involved in environmental protection. And uh, I gave the examiner the reasons as to why I would like to, to work for that kind of company in order to save Mother Nature from air pollution deforestation deforestation means cutting or down of trees and dumping of industrial waste in rivers now dumping means throwing all kinds of industrial means factory wastes they dump these they throw them in rivers and lakes and that hurts mother nature now let's move on to question six what causes environmental problems? What causes environmental problems? In this question, the examiner wants to know, in your opinion, what are some of the things that cause environmental problems? Now, to answer that question, you can say, sample answer one. Environmental problems are as a result of factories releasing unpurified gas emissions into the air, throwing industrial waste products into uh, the rivers, as well as car emissions, which lead to air pollution. Environmental problems are as a result of factories releasing unpurified gas emissions into the air, throwing industrial waste products into the rivers, as well as car emissions which lead to air pollution. Now, in that sample answer, I told the examiner all the causes of environmental problems that I could think of. Now, the environmental problems are as a result of as a result of is simply a linking word that means because factories that is industries they release unpurified it means that the air that they release into the into the air is dirty okay throwing industrial waste that is dumping waste products from the factories into the rivers as well as car emissions Car emissions are, is the air that comes out of the exhaust pipe of a car. It stinks, which leads to air 
pollution. Now, let's look at sample answer two. Or what causes environmental problems? Now, causes of environmental problems include burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, which involves cutting down of trees, and oil or sewer leakages into rivers and lakes. Causes of environmental problems include burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, which involves cutting down of trees, and oil or sewer leakages into rivers and lakes. Now, in that second sample answer, I identified a number of causes of environmental problems. They include burning of fuel, fossil fuels, deforestation, which means cutting down of trees, oil or sewer. Now, sewer is water that comes from uh, uh, you know the sewers okay like for example the toilets uh that is water from the sewer okay so sometimes this water ends up into rivers and lakes and that leads to water pollution now let's move on to question seven what should the government do to protect the environment in this question, the examiner wants to know what sort of things do you think the government should do to protect the environment? Now, you can answer this question by saying sample answer one. To aid in the protection of the environment, the government can provide a subsidy to people who want to install solar panels on their roofs, as well as introduce strict strict laws and legislation against dumping of industrial waste into rivers and lakes. To aid in the protection of the environment, the government can provide a subsidy to people who want to install solar panels on their roofs as well as introduce strict laws and legislation against dumping of industrial wastes into rivers and lakes. So in this first sample answer, I told the examiner what I think can be done to aid in. To aid means to help, to help in the protection of the environment. The government can provide a subsidy. Now a subsidy is a, an amount of money, you know, like a discount, okay? A discount, an amount of money that uh, can be given to people who want to install solar panels. Now, solar panels are the panels that you put on your roof so that they can, uh, uh, through the sun, you are able to produce electricity, okay? Uh, as well as introduce strict laws and legislation against dumping. As I said earlier on, dumping is throwing of industrial waste or factory waste into rivers and lakes, okay? Now, let's move on to sample answer two. What should the government do to protect the environment? To safeguard the environment for future generations, the government should ban deforestation, coal burning, and encourage people to grow more trees and plants. To safeguard the environment for future generations, the government should ban deforestation, coal burning, and encourage people to grow more trees and plants. So in that sample answer, I told the examiner what I think the government should do to protect the environment for future generations. Future generations are the children okay, of the future. The government should ban. Now to ban is to absolutely say that people are not allowed to do any form of deforestation. Now deforestation means cutting down of trees, coal burning. It's like when people burn charcoal, people burn trees to produce charcoal and encourage people to grow more trees and plants. Now, let's move on to question eight. What should we do to protect the environment? 
What should we do to protect the environment? In this question, the examiner wants to know what sort of things do you think we can do as human beings to protect the environment? Now you can answer this question by saying sample answer one. We can protect the environment by taking public transport as much as possible, cutting down on air and water pollution, as well as reducing the usage of chemical and pesticides. We can protect the environment by taking public transport as much as possible, cutting down on air and water pollution, as well as reducing the usage of chemicals and pesticides. So in that first sample answer, I told the examiner some of the things that I think we could do to protect the environment. By taking public transport, meaning you take the train, the bus, for example, or the tram, instead of driving your private car. Cutting down on air and water pollution. To cut down means to reduce, as well as reducing the usage of chemicals and pesticides. So reducing the usage, so reducing the use of chemicals and pesticides. Now, let's look at sample answer two. What should we do to protect the environment? Some of the ways through which we can protect the environment include using renewable sources of energy, for example, solar and wind energy. We should also reduce our carbon footprint by buying locally grown farm produce and recycling household goods such as electronics and clothing or buying secondhand items. Some of, some of the ways through which we can protect the environment include using renewable sources of energy, for example, solar and wind energy. We should also reduce our carbon footprint by buying locally grown farm produce and recycling household goods such as electronics and clothing or buying secondhand items. So in this second sample answer, I told the examiner all the things that I think we should do to protect the environment. For example, using renewable sources of energy, okay? Using renewable sources of energy, for example. So renewable, it means that it can be replenished. Like for example, solar energy or wind energy. We should also reduce our carbon footprint by buying locally grown farm produce. That is, you buy uh, products that are grown in the area where you live, meaning that uh, farmers don't have to transport those products from a distance uh, away from where you live to bring them to the market. By doing that, you reduce, you cut down on your carbon footprint. Recycling household goods, for example, electronics and clothing, or even buying secondhand items. When you need a chair, instead of cutting down a tree to make a chair, you buy a, a, a chair that has already been used by somebody else that is buying a secondhand item. Now, let's move on to question nine. How should we educate children to protect the environment? How should we educate children to protect the environment? In this question, the examiner wants to know what are the different ways that, that can help us educate children, you know, help children learn about protecting the environment. Now you can answer that question by saying sample answer one. We can educate children on how to protect the environment by letting them explore and enjoy being in nature so that they can develop an appreciation for the environment, teaching them environmentally our friendly habits at home, such as turning off and use light switches, always putting garbage in bins and turning the tap off while brushing their teeth to avoid water spillage. We can, educate, we can educate children on how to protect the environment by letting them explore and enjoy being in nature so that they can develop an appreciation for the environment, 
teaching them environmentally friendly habits at home, such as turning off unused um, light switches, always putting garbage in bins, and turning the tap off while brushing their teeth to avoid water spillage. So in that first sample answer, I told the examiner all the things that I think we can do to help children learn uh, to protect the environment. Okay? We can let children explore and enjoy being in nature. And when they do that, they develop an appreciation for the environment. You can also teach them uh, environmentally friendly habits at home, like for example, turning off uh, unused light switches, always putting garbage in bins, and turning the tap off while brushing their teeth to avoid water uh, spillage. Now, let's move on to sample answer two. How should we educate children to protect the environment? Children can be taught how to protect the environment through teaching them uh, to give away their toys and clothes that they don't use, working together in the garden and giving them chores while separating household garbage for recycling. Above all, we should lead by example so that the children can copy our environmentally friendly habits. Children can be taught how to protect the environment through teaching them to give away their toys and clothes that they don't use, working together in the garden and giving them chores while separating household garbage for recycling. Above all, we should live by example so that the children can copy our environmentally friendly habits. So in this second sample answer, I told the examiner the things that we should do to help children learn about the environment. Through teaching them uh, to give away their toys and clothes that they don't use, you know, instead of uh, people buying new ones, working together in the garden and giving them chores. These chores are tasks, you know, while separating household garbage for recycling. You can ask your children to help you do that. And above all, we should live by example uh, so that the children can copy our environmentally friendly habits. If you as a parent, you do it, then your children are going to copy you. Now let's move on to question 10. What is the difference between the old and the young as regards environmental protection? What is the difference between the old and the young as regards environmental protection? Now, in this question, the examiner wants to know whether you think old people and young people have the same opinion when it comes to environmental protection. Now, you can answer that question by saying sample answer one. Older people tend to take issues pertaining to environmental protection more seriously compared to the youth who seem to think that global warming and climate change are a myth. Others think it is the responsibility of the government or older people to ensure the environment is well protected. Older people tend to take uh, issues pertaining to environmental protection more seriously compared to the youth who seem to think that global warming and climate change are a myth. Others think it is the responsibility of the government or older people to ensure that the environment is well protected. So in that first sample answer, I identified a difference between what old and young people think about the environment. Older people tend to take issues pertaining. Pertaining simply means issues about environmental protection more seriously compared to the youth who seem to think that global warming and climate change are a myth. If something is a myth, it means that it's not true. And then you have young people who think that the responsibility or it is the responsibility of the government or older people to ensure that the environment is well protected. Now let's look at sample answer two. What is the difference between the old and the young as regards environmental protection? Older people are more actively uh, involved in 
environmental protection than the young, mainly through recycling, installation of solar panels on their roofs, purchase of electric cars, and not throwing garbage on the streets because they want to preserve Mother Nature for future generations. Older people are more actively uh, involved in environmental protection than the young, mainly through recycling, installation of solar panels on their roofs, uh, purchase of electric cars and not throwing garbage on the streets because they want to preserve Mother Nature for future generations. So in that sample answer, I identified a difference between old and young people when it comes to the env uh, environmental protection. You know, older people are more actively involved. They tend to do more to protect the environment uh, through recycling, through installation of solar panels on their roofs. Installation means letting uh, the engineers put the solar panels on the roof. Purchase of electric cars and not throwing garbage on the streets uh, because they want to preserve Mother Nature. To preserve means they want to make sure that uh, planet Earth is taken care of for future generations. Now, let's move on to question 11. Do you believe that climate change is a serious problem? Do you believe that climate change is a serious problem? Now, in this question, the examiner wants to know whether, in your opinion, climate change is a serious problem. Now, you can answer this question by saying, sample, answer one. Absolutely. In recent years, we have witnessed a lot of side effects of climate change, such as floods due to rising sea levels and heat waves leading to melting glaciers, uh, warming oceans and wildfires. Absolutely. In recent years, we have witnessed a lot of side effects of climate change, such as floods due to rising sea levels and heat waves, leading to melting glaciers, warming oceans and wildfires. So in that sample answer, I have told the examiner that I really believe um, that uh, climate change is a serious problem. In recent years, that is the last few years, we have witnessed, we have seen a lot of side effects of climate change. For example, floods, a lot of countries that never used to flood before are flooding now. And that is because of rising sea levels. Uh, we have heat waves leading to melting glaciers, warming oceans, oceans are warming up and we have a lot of wildfires. Now let's move on to sample answer two. Do you believe that climate change is a serious problem? Well, I do believe that climate change is certainly a big problem, but I think that people tend to exaggerate it to make it sound like it is so severe. In my opinion, we have more serious problems in the world, such as poverty and life-threatening diseases such as cancer. Well, I do believe that climate change is certainly a big problem, but I think that people tend to exaggerate it to make it sound like it is so severe. In my opinion, we have more serious problems in the world, such as poverty and life-threatening diseases, such as cancer. So in the second sample answer, I kind of don't agree that climate change is a serious problem. Remember, you don't have to agree with the answers. As long as you have your own personal opinion and you can e express it in English, that's all that matters. So while I do believe that climate change is certainly a big problem, but I think that people tend to exaggerate. Exaggerate means to make it sound like it is worse than it is. In my opinion, we have more serious uh, 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 problems in the world, such as poverty and life-threatening diseases. Life-threatening means that it's a disease that could kill you. Now, let's move on to question 12. That's the last question. Are there many environmental problems in your country? Are there many environmental problems in your country? So in this question, the examiner wants to know whether there are environmental problems you know, many environmental problems in your country. Now, you can answer this question by saying, sample, answer, one. 
most certainly, like most countries in the world, my country has been experiencing environmental difficulties. For example, earthquakes, floods, and a lot of wildfires, which have destroyed a lot of forests in the northern part of the country. Most certainly, like most countries in the world, my country has been experiencing environmental difficulties, for example, earthquakes, floods, and a lot of wildfires which have destroyed a lot of forests in the northern part of the country. So in that sample answer, I told the examiner that um, yes, my country most certainly, most definitely has been experiencing a lot of environmental problems, you know, like most countries in the world, like a lot of countries in the world. Most countries means like a lot of countries in the world. My country has been experiencing environmental difficulties challenges for example earthquakes when you have earthquakes you have uh, the earth kind of uh, shakes you have floods you know floods is when you have uh, rains and then you have a lot of water that sweeps away you know buildings a lot of wildfires when you have fires just starting on their own now let's move on to sample answer two are there many environmental problems in your country not really. We have more pressing problems in my country, such as COVID, which has led to countless deaths and poverty, with majority of the people living below the poverty line. Not really. We have more pressing problems in my country, such as COVID, which has led to countless deaths and poverty, with majority of the people living uh, below the poverty line. So in that second answer, again, I have let the examiner know that no, my country has not had many environmental problems. In my country, we have more pressing problems, more pressing problems. We have more serious, urgent problems. For example, COVID, which has led to, led to countless death. Countless means the people who have died cannot even be counted. There are so many. And another problem that we have is poverty, because majority of the people are living below the poverty line. Now, if you're living before the, below the poverty line, it means that um, you're very, very, very poor and you barely uh, are surviving. So, there we go. That's how you're supposed to answer those questions. Now, this brings me to the last section of my lesson where I'm going to give you some tips to help you score a high band. But before, before I do that, as I do that, remember to subscribe, like and share. Um, the first tip that I'm going to uh, give you is sometimes students ask me, why are your answers so long? This is because I'm aiming for a band nine. And when you're aiming for a band nine, you need to make sure that your uh, sentences are either simple, are either compound or complex. A compound sentence has one linking word. A complex sentence has two or more linking words. So if you're aiming for band eight or band nine, you need to use a lot of compound and complex sentences in your answers. The next tip I'm going to give you is that make sure that you use the correct vocabulary for the topic that you're talking about. We are talking about the environmental protection here. All the words that I've put in blue are vocabulary that can help you to talk about this topic. The next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is um, always listen very carefully to the question that the examiner is asking you. And once you have listened to the question, always give two to three ideas for each question. Do not simply say yes or no. The next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is to practice, practice, practice. Because the more you practice, the more you improve your fluency. How do you practice? Just read the question and read the sample answers. You can repeat after me if you want. Um, the other thing that is important is that you use correct grammar. Actually, that is the most important. Make sure that you're using the correct grammar, correct tenses, correct subject verb agreement. If you have a problem in grammar, have a look at the uh, my comment, uh, my pinned comment or the description box below this video and you will find a link to a lot of videos that are going to help you improve in your grammar. So there you go. 
If you found this video helpful at all, please give the video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to this channel for more helpful videos, like and share the video and I shall see you all in our next lesson. Thank you and bye bye.